I came on air and we quite rightly were told Kamala Harris is going to speak for the first time since the shocking news at the weekend that the Democratic cover-up of Joe Biden was over, that he's exceeded defeat, he's retired. So this is it. So I've got, literally, in my ear, we'll get ready, we'll go to Kamala. I'm doing 40 minutes of this build-up, right? Yeah? We've got every major network in the world has got their cameras on the back of the White House, on the lawn. Out she comes and she starts speaking and we go to it and she starts by saying well done to all these athletes who are with her. It was a bit bizarre. Then she does this legacy bit, fantastic, well done. She described him as unmatched, uh, not unhinged, unmatched. She also said, which I thought was quite poignant, he's done more in three years than most presidents do in two terms. In brackets, why don't you endorse me, Obama? That was meant for you, close brackets. And then, just as I thought she'd start, the, you know, fire the starting gun on the campaign, I want the nomination, I'm the... She went back to the athletes and then she walked off the stage. It was the biggest confused mess I've ever seen. However, I know I'm taking the time to explain this to you, Poppy Coburn was on from The Telegraph and the reason I went all around the houses was for this. I was going, this is madness, and she said, I think this is deliberate. I think that Biden will speak in the next couple of days and will resign the presidency and Kamala Harris will become the 47th president, will fight the election without having to get the nomination and that's why she's keeping quiet. Take a breath, all yours, Isabel Oaksha. What do you make of it all? Wow. Well, that would be quite the twist. Um, I haven't been, I haven't spent the last 24 or 48 hours hammering the phones on this and speaking to well-placed uh, sources over in the US because I've been very focused on what's going on here. Um, but I, it's, that's not something that I have picked up. It's not something that has been speculated on heavily in the media over here. But you could see the logic of it, couldn't you? Because mm. the question is, with respect, and many people have said it to me on this station, you know what I think about the people that listen and watch? They have great opinions. And this couple of people said earlier, how can you not be fit enough to go on the campaign trail and yet apparently cognitively and, and fitness-wise, you're OK to be the leader of the free world with the buttons for nuclear weapons? What they're saying is, oh, you're missing the point. People are saying he's going to sit in the White House doing nothing, just having a hot toddy, and she's going to be free to go and do the campaign. But I don't know. Nothing would surprise me. In the last seven days, we've had an assassination attempt on the would-be president and this president finally accepting that he's not up to the job. These are seismic times, right? Yeah, so two observations here. I mean, Biden hasn't truly been running the country, has he, for a very long time? I mean, he's effectively been a puppet of the powerful forces around him. So Don't, don't... hit me, you'll love this. Powerful forces, breaking news on talk. This is just in. Nancy Pelosi has literally just endorsed Kamala Harris to succeed Joe Biden. Nancy Pelosi has thrown a weight behind Kamala Harris to succeed Joe Biden. Isabel, sorry, I need to do that. Well, I mean, that took her a little while, didn't it? I mean, there's a slight sense of grudging there. So, um, yeah, just going back to what I was saying, Joe Biden could stagger on in the same way that he staggered this far. In other words, other people uh, running the country effectively with him just there in name only. In terms of the idea of installing her as president now, the Democrats are in such a desperate position with Trump so far ahead on pretty much every measure. You can actually see the attraction from their side of doing that because with that great office of state gives her the opportunity to shine, gives her the opportunity to come out of the shadows and perhaps they calculate that that would put on several points in terms of the opinion polls and actually show a number of doubters and there are awful lot of them what she is made of. They want to show that she's been underestimated. They have to show that. Her reputation, certainly on the international stage, is woeful. So anything they can do between now and polling day has got to be about showing that she has been well underestimated and that she can dazzle. And uh, she, I'm, and not got, I'm, I'm not convinced, but then, of course, Ian Collins made a really good point. The power suits will come out, the hair will change, everything will be this. But, you know, they're, they're throwing out stuff, Isabel. $50 million has been raised. It's a big argument earlier between James Price and Sean Woodward. James Price saying, that's not about her. I, 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 been, I Maybe I'm wrong. I've said that I thought there was a box of tissues here that would do better than her. But I've got another theory, which I would love, and then we'll let you go. I think the Democrats know that they're done here. 
I think that nobody that's anybody wants to be on the 2024 ticket. I think they'll go, this is yours, Kamali. You can take you can take the rap, you can deal with Trump, because you know what? We'll look at 2028. Gavin Newsom and Gretchen, which they're not interested in 2024. If you had to sum it up, sorry for the pace, it's always the same. Can she beat Donald Trump if she wins the nomination? No, and I think you're dead right, um, uh, Jeremy, you're dead right. Nobody wants to touch this. They'll let her take it, let her fail, let her fail quite badly, and then they will regroup with a view, uh, people like Gavin Newsom, to storming in in uh, four years' time. And very wise that is, too. She can't win. She won't win. I think Trump's unstoppable.